Noxy was never afraid to tell his story. Hello, uh, my name is Noxy. It means star. Now, I have a Cherokee name, but I am also Paiute, like you, and Yakima, like her, and Shoshone. And I'm going to tell you about when I built huge skyscrapers and bridges. Noxy was never afraid to meet change. One of my favorite things to do growing up was to go huckleberry picking with my family. And one of the most beautiful sights I have ever seen was from the rising of the sun on a cold mountain morning. The way the beams of light gently push through the trees and warm the air reminds me of how breakable life is. Now, no matter how strong you think the earth is, it is always important to give back whatever you take. That way, we continue to live together in peace. This idea sometimes gets lost in the hustle and bustle of life, especially when we create stuff for our own comfort. But change is something we can't run from, and change is necessary. Which is why I went to Chicago to meet change. Noxy was never afraid to be lost. In 1956, when I first got to Chicago, I was lost. I had no idea where the Indian Center was. Now, an Indian Center is a place where Native Americans can go to connect with people, share ideas, share culture, like why we wear certain things, and get help for whatever we might need. So when I got off the bus, I decided to follow a person that looked like my cousin around for a bit because he looked like he knew where he was going. But then I saw the buildings. They shaded me from the warmth of the sun. They were so tall, I could no longer see the mountains or feel the wind on my face. And the noise and lights made me feel so sick. I couldn't understand how so many people could be in such a rush with that sunset. It felt weird to stand on anything other than the ground. Was I still in this world? I could still see my breath in the cold, so maybe I was. I zipped up my jacket, blocked the noise from the city, and walked towards the sun. It has not led me astray yet. Noxy was never afraid to ask for help. Once it started to get dark, I found a restaurant and decided to see if they had a telephone. I walked in and could feel the eyes of people staring at me. I walked over to someone who looked like they worked there, and before I said anything, he said that they don't serve my kind. I didn't know what that meant, so I asked about the phone. He told me about a payphone a couple blocks down the road, and I left. But anyway, I called my contact at the Indian Center and someone came and got me. It took a while for me to get adjusted to city life. Everything was different. What really bothered me though was drying laundry. I kept on forgetting it outside and by the time it was dry, it would be dirty again. My roommate who was from the Wisconsin area told me it was because the air was dirty. I didn't understand what that meant until I met someone yelling on the street about it. They said that it was the steel mills making the skies glow red, and that waste, dirt, and trash was being pushed into the water and beaches, killing the fish. It reminded me of my cousin and his lake in 1944, where the U.S. Navy was practicing different kinds of bombs in it, turning the sunset purple. The shells of the bombs were bigger than my arm. My cousin and I would always wonder why 
we ever let them practice their torpedoes in our lake. They didn't even have the respect to call the lake by its name. They called it Target 14. I thought about this all while I was working on this very tall building. For some reason we had decided to work through the whole day and the sunset was coming up to tell us to stop. Me and my roommate sat and watched it. I noticed from this height the red glow of the waste from the steel mills did not block the sun and we could see it as it was meant to be seen. Noxy was never afraid to be different. The city is very, very different from home. Besides the hustle and bustle, the people can be pretty rude. At work, they call me chief, which irritates me. At the bank, they wouldn't accept my tribal ID, which is a federal ID, and laugh at my name, Noxy, which was given to me by my Cherokee side of the family. And whenever I mention anything Cherokee, my roommates always make fun of me as if being Cherokee was a punchline. But anyways, it seems a lot of people are afraid of anything different and act out in anger towards those that are different. So no wonder they would treat nature any differently. I was always told to treat nature and animals like your family because without them, we cannot survive. One day when I was feeling lonely, I wrote this poem. The wind pushes us to move, but the smog burns our eyes. The rain heals our bodies, but the pollution blisters our skin. The soil feeds us, yet we poison it. The sun and moon provide our light, yet we add more and are unable to view the night sky. And the noise, 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 noise disorients those who hear. We did this to ourselves, but together we can heal. Noxy was never afraid to be together. When everyone had the same day off, or whenever we wanted to sing and dance, we would go to Hyde Park with our drums. We would sing until all our lungs gave out. These days would always remind me of our dances back home, how fun and peaceful they were. It makes me think of my new family here in the city and how together we can do anything. Noxy was never afraid of the ending. So what I want you to get out of my story is that the earth and everything in it is our family and that it is important to know each other's differences in order to have a better understanding of each other. That way we can heal instead of destroy. Mm -hmm.